Hey folks, today I got my rig out here at Powerpole. We're actually going to do an install video of poles on my G3. So uh, we're going to, my buddy Joe here at Powerpole is going to help me. And if you do this job right, you'll never have to touch it again. So one of the first things you got to do with this particular install that I'm having, my boat does not have a actual jack plate on it. On a lot of the power pole assemblies, you can mount your actual power pole bracket to the side of your jack plate. But on this particular boat, I don't run a jack plate, so I actually have to run sandwich brackets, what's called sandwich brackets. It's a bracket that goes in between the transom of my boat and the motor. That's how we're gonna mount these brackets to my boat, or mount my power poles to the boat. Got a uh, sandwich bracket that we'll use to, to put in between the engine and the transom. That's where we're gonna mount our poles at. And we actually don't have to take the engine all the way off. All we have to do is slide the, uh, the bracket in between the mounting bracket of the engine and the transom. One thing we'll do, one real important step, you see right here on the bottom of the skeg, I've got just uh, some support here. So when the engine, when we take these bolts out, this at least got some support so the engine just doesn't plop down on us. So we got the bolts out on the, uh, the side that we're actually going to install first, but what we need to do just to give this a little play in between the transom is I need to loosen up this side as well. Just loosen up, we're not gonna take the bolts all the way out. I might have to hold that. Uh, she had a little spank on her. So you can see I got the bolts backed out just enough to where we got a little play. So when, uh, when I go to put the bracket on the other side, we can pry the engine and have some room to work with to slide the brackets in between the transom and the engine. This is what we're going to do. This is our bracket right here. It's going to mount in between the transom and the mounting uh, plate on the engine. Make sure the top one matches. So the top one is going to match this way, right? Yeah. Sliding that plate in between there. You got a little bit more. Yeah, line up with this one. What well, we did, the bottom slot on that bracket, it, it slotted and the top hole is the actual hole. Obviously the bottom with the slot is a lot easier to get in. So we got that one already through bolted correctly. And um, I just kind of stuck it in the top mounting hole just to hold the bracket still until we can get it exactly like how we want it. He's running the nut up on there right now that'll hold everything in place. And as soon as he gets that done, I'm gonna take that out and put it in the right way. and. Uh, the port side will be that's correct that's the port side right getting fancy talking about port side port side is our brackets already mounted so our uh mounting brackets are already mounted we've got the engine tightened back up i've got our jam nuts jammed up on top of the uh the through bolts here so our next step is to actually mount the poles we can mount the poles before we mount the pumps inside the boat but before you want to do this process, you definitely want to be thinking about where you're going to place your pumps in your boat, depending on what type of boat you have and so forth. A lot of boats don't have a lot of room in the back of them, so you just really got to be really thoughtful about where you're going to put your pumps. But our next step is to actually mount the poles to the bracket. Joe's going to help me with that. I've got eight foot blades that I'm using on, the, on my boat. You have eight foot, 10 foot blades. You can get them in a lot of different colors. But for this install, I'm using eight foot black because my boat's black and I wanted to match. Take our pumps, uh, take our poles out of the box here. Oh yeah. Perfection in the box. That looks like something you would pack together. That's like something I would make right here, doesn't it? Looks like something I would make. Eight foot black blades. The hardware. We're going. We're going to the starboard side first. One thing I don't like to do is uh, we're not going to really worry about tightening or getting the pole exactly straight until we get all the hardware and mounting done at the end. But I'm I am going to snug this up. Just snug it up a little bit. Probably should loosen that a little bit actually. And I'll I'll tighten it all the way down at the very end. It'll be the last thing we do. We've got the poles actually mounted on the brackets here. But I didn't tighten the bolts all the way down on the bracket. And the reason why is 
I almost always try to bend my poles in towards the engine. What that does is when you actually release and deploy your poles, it gives them a wider reach. So they, they let down, instead of letting straight down like this, they go a little bit more to the side. You see the difference here? That's wider than this is. So, but for you guys, this is just a 90 horse engine. For you guys that have the bigger engines, the V6s and V8s, you gotta be careful to make sure you've got clearance on your engine when you go to turn because you can have a problem with your engine actually hitting the, the power pole. So I'm clear on this engine, so I can actually tip, tilt them in all the way to the engine as far as they can, you know, as far as they'll go. And what that does is just give me a little bit wider reach. It makes my boat a little bit more stable. That's the whole purpose of what we're doing. Now, it's time to put the pumps in and the hydraulic pumps and actually power the pumps. For me, personally, I'm not talking about you that's watching. That's why I started to use a lot of profanity. Because you got to mount the pumps right. And depending on the boat, it can get a little tricky. So, number one thing you got to do is you got to look in the back of your boat. Wherever you decide to, to mount your, your pumps, you usually want to mount them as close to where the, the poles are as possible. You got to find a place in the back of your boat that has enough room and it's flush enough for you to mount them nicely. So you can see, and this is a smaller boat. This is a 17 foot, 10 inch boat. Don't have a whole bunch of room back here at the transom, but there's enough to, to, uh, to mount them. So we're gonna mount them just right here to the back of these transom braces back here. And um, it's probably gonna be a little bit of crying going on by the time I finish this, this part of the, the install. But it's really, you really have to think this part out. You don't want to put them somewhere where if you know you, you need to put a little fluid in there or if you need to get to wires or get to your fuses, you want to have that really easy accessible. So if I had any advice at all, the most common mistake I've seen with guys is putting those pumps tucked away somewhere where they can never get to them. Or are, and you also don't want to have them where they're sitting in water. You want to try to mount them. I like to have my pumps where they're suspended off the bottom. So if there's any water that ever gets in the boat that my pumps aren't submerged in water. Anytime you're working with uh, water and power, you always know water is your worst, worst enemy. So I like to keep them up. We're gonna mount them a little bit off the bottom of the, the hull of the boat. And it should work semi-smoothly. I'm not gonna say smoothly until we're done. So Joe just did something that I just learned something that I should have been doing on all my previous installs, is he went ahead and put some hydraulic fluid in the reservoirs of the pumps. These are the two pumps for both power poles just makes it easier to get to them. You don't have to worry about wasting the hydraulic fluid in the, in the bottom or the hole of your boat, the bilge of your boat. So it keeps everything a lot cleaner. So as I was saying, I always keep my fuse box up above the water. You don't want to get moisture inside here because you'll get corrosion. It can cause a lot of problems with your pump and your connections. So one thing you want to do with your fuse, your fuse panel here is mount it upright. You can see the top comes off of it. You want to mount it this way so if water happens to get in there, it drains out of the fuse panel just correct. So, and it also allows you to get to your to your fuse really easily. If you have blow a fuse, you can just take it and pull it out real easily. So mount it this way, mount it upright, so the water, even though it has a rubber gasket, if you ever happen to get any moisture in there, it can drain out properly. It's going to kind of uh, dry fit where I think these pumps are going to fit right. So what I'm going to do is just uh, mount this bracket. Not, I'm just going to tighten it up by hand just to see if. If what I'm thinking in my mind will actually work, I'm just gonna put it on here by hand the first time. I think we're gonna be good, Joe. It should, I think it's gonna work okay. Are you thinking, this is what I had in mind, what do you think? This way or no? It could work. I think maybe put one on this side, one over here. Oh, so you can get both right here. You think so? Possibly. Okay. You might have to loosen this tube or float yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want me to take this out? It maybe put this one in first on this side. And okay, then do that one. and then do this one. Yep. Okay, that's even better. I was thinking I was gonna have to do one and one, so I can do both on one side. That's why they call them jump. So what I just did is I just took a marker. We're just drilling a uh, marking where I'm gonna have to put the pilot holes before we screw the bracket to the transom of the boat. Make sure it's forward. I'll make sure it's just drilling that hole right there. So this is the bracket that the pump is gonna to mount to. Uh, I'll run them all in by hand to hold the bracket up first. And then we'll tighten them in. I got the bracket mounted on the inside and uh, now I'm mounting, just tighten up the pump 
to the bracket. This is it was a 916th wrench. It'll take a lot of tools to do this, three or four tools. Whenever you work. I've already got a rigging hole right here on the transom of the boat right here that I can run my hydraulic lines through. And all the power pole hosing comes with a grommet that you can use, like if you got a fiberglass and you got to drill a new hole. This is so water is not continuously going inside the uh, transom of your boat. But I don't need this, so I can just take it right off. Like that. Just take both of these grommets off on the up and down hose. It's not as easy as I thought it was going to be, huh? And down you can see I think they're labeled on here we'll do the up first and it's and it's labeled on here if I'm not mistaken too right on our pump blue up. up blue is up blue for sky is up and brown for brown is for down but it's not brown it's black so you know whatever the prophylactic there's another vocabulary word for you right there a little prophylactic on top of it and uh, we we'll just rig that guy right on your little brass nipple there. It is brass, so try not to cross thread that because then that leads to vocabulary failure, otherwise known as profanity. <laughs> vocabulary failure. I'll screw that right down on top of it. Tighten it. We'll do a nice hand tighten a quarter turn. With five quarter eights. turn with five eighths. We'll take our excess hose and just coil that up real nicely and tuck it somewhere here in the bolt. Just kind of out of the way. Yeah, throw me a couple zip ties, Jim. As the finishing touches on uh, mounting our pumps and getting those nice and secure, we want to get those secure, especially if you guys in bass boats or bay boats or bigger boats that have a lot more speed that take a lot of a lot of beating. This boat's pretty slow. It's a smaller boat, it only tops out around 38 miles an hour. Um, but for your bigger boats, definitely make sure your pumps are secure. That's a big deal. Our next step is uh, probably one of the easier steps. All we have to do now is to power up our pumps. It's really easy wiring. It's just a positive and negative. You can power it straight to your uh, cranking battery. If you have a house battery, you can rig them to your house battery. Or if you have a power panel in, your, in the back of your boat, you could also rig them up to that. Just the really important thing to remember, like I mentioned earlier, is to make sure your fuse is, is mounted upright. That way, if you do happen to get water in here, which I promise you at some point, you are gonna get water in here just because it's a boat and you're in a wet environment and uh, water's just around you. Just make it where that water will leak down and out that little fuse cap there and uh and it's also easy to get to the actual fuse itself if you have to change it because i can promise you at some point you're gonna have to replace the fuse which is about the only thing that i've ever had to do maintenance wise on my power poles is replace fuses so we're good there power up the pumps or no yep already somewhere seems we just gotta cross sync it let me see real quick okay This is this side. Um, go ahead and hold that orange button down until it beeps. Is it self priming like that? It will. Uh, hit it again. All right, so all I'm doing is there's an orange button right on top of your pumps. Program. Uh, and we're programming the pumps right now. All I got to do is just hold it down until it beeps. It'll beep like that and you let it go. You can hear it just kind of turn on for a little bit, and all it's doing is just getting some fluid into the lines. Do I need to do it a couple Not times, good. Jeff? You're good? All right, let's see what we got. We got any fire in the hole? We good? All right, here we go. Let's see here. We need to go up. Keep holding it, bring it up. It's just getting the air out of the lines. You see how it'll start to jerk? Just getting some of the air out. Do it a couple times. Yeah. 
last beautification project. With your fire poles, it comes with a couple different ways to, uh, to let them down. I think we've got, is it four ways? You've got your uh, up and down switch. This is what I'll mount at the bow of my boat right here. This is a lanyard that you can put around your neck. So you can go up and down. And there's also the one that you can put at your console, I think is somewhere over there. It's just, uh, throw me that one, Jerry. You can use this one as well. I usually mount this guy at the console. I think you can actually use it around your neck too. But what I'll usually do is just get some double-sided tape. So if I mount it somewhere that I don't like and just put it anywhere I want. This got glue in here? It's already in here. We got double-sided tape already in here. All the details, dude. You ain't even gotta buy double-sided tape. Now it's sinking the, uh, the controls here. <laughs> All you had to do is uh, basically just hold this down and the orange button on top. Joe's hitting the orange button on top of the pump. And you hold this down at the same time and it'll sync your, uh, sync your controls with your pump. Since we're running two pumps, you got to sync the controls with both pumps. So this pole's still going to go down. So we're doing the down button now. He's holding the orange button and I'm going to hold it down. To your right. Should both go down this time. And I'll hit the up button and it should both all come up. You do have the double tap. Next part is we gotta actually mount this where we wanna have them at the bow of the boat. So let's go do that. Our controls paired. Next thing we gotta do is figure out where we actually wanna mount them on the bow of the boat. And so I always like to stow the trolling motor and get up here on your boat and get a good feel for where what feels comfortable for you what's easily accessible to your feet because all you're going to use is your feet to do this for me i like to mount them forward so i'm not always stepping on them while i'm fishing i like them like to mount them as far forward as i can you can mount them beside each other like that or you can mount one on each side of the trolling motor pedal whichever is best for you uh, i think for me i like to put one on each side so that way i can get used to where to what's what I usually have the down on the right side and the up on the left. That doesn't matter. Just do whatever is best for you. So I'll get up here. I'll fill around. This is a new boat, so I'm not really familiar with what feels best. But I think uh, I think right there probably probably be my best bet. All right. That's it. Now those controls are mounted. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be good. It's gonna be real good. It's gonna be real good. You gotta pretty much do the same thing up front that you do, um, uh, the same thing we did on the bow. We need to make sure we real thoughtful about where we place our controller here at the dash. Cause a lot of times you're using this when you're docking the boat. So uh, I like to have it where I've got good access. You want to have a good flat surface as well to, to bond the controller to. And from what I can tell, this is going to be the best area for me right here because it'll be easy to get my thumbs in and around the buttons without uh, making a mistake here. So what I'm going to do is just pilot drill a hole here. You just don't want to put it anywhere where it's kind of hard to get to and not really easy accessible. There we go. Now she's ready. Hit it up, hit it down. 